Ladies and gentlemen, how you doing? How you feeling? Welcome to this week's episode of Search and Report. I am your host, True Fernie, and today I have my friend, The Rocket, again. Hi, man. Hello. <laughs> Good to be back. <laughs> Hi. Um, welcome to what is essentially this um, the Search and Report's holiday episode. Um, if anything, I don't know if I'm going to do another episode this year, <laughs> since, you know, the, I think we only have like eight days more left in this amazing year you know that's given us a lot say that sarcastically um but without <laughs> further ado um first of all why don't we start with what we're playing this week because this is going to be a great great segue into our first news item of the week what have you been playing man uh so i believe we both have been playing cyberpunk mm -hmm. actually <laughs> um and i've also been playing destiny 2 because surprise i got my xbox series x uh, s nice in the mail yesterday and i tried it out and it's it's a lot you know it's it's a lot better than i expected uh it's gameplay and graphics are beautiful nice and i didn't expect that to come out of that, that little machine um so i can't wait to see what the x uh looks like and i believe you finally scored your ps5 yes yep. finally <laughs> After a month could, of fight, we can just hug our machines right now, right? <laughs> oh, I mean, I know the Series S is pretty, pretty compact, but no, that that thing's too big, man. It's like <laughs> I'm looking at it right now, it's the same size, it's like a CPU, like it's it's too big, yeah. it's extremely big. But yeah, finally, the, the 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 struggle is over. Um, how did you yeah. how did you get your Series S? So, um, I got I followed a couple Twitter accounts on my phone, uh, just turn notifications on for when they were in stock um and then i got the notification obviously this was during the whole best buy uh craze um mm. that one morning where they said they were gonna have them in stock at like six in the morning I, th I believe your time would be eight in the morning yeah and it didn't happen so people were just like what's going on and then suddenly microsoft came out with um with some stock in their in their store so that's when i was able to go very quickly on my phone and i already had all my information in on my account and then i just bought it right away oh nice yeah and you bought it online right yeah i did and then just nice yeah man it's been it's been a mess it's been oh i i then this is one of the stories that we'll touch upon um because i also got mine online but i got it through walmart you know one of my least favorite retailers but i got it um finally after a month of constant struggling staying up and uh right. fighting off bots but um since we both are uh, have been playing cyberpunk 2077 for what is now it's been out for almost two weeks now and it's been one of the most eventful launches for a game ever in my opinion um nice. it, as we all know there was a huge um a huge huge uh, well basically it's just a lot of drama happening with uh, cyberpunk especially with their publisher not so much uh the actual game i mean the game is buggy as as hell but um they've been caught cd project red have been caught doing some very shady stuff um so in our first news item of the week we have uh shares in cd project red dropped nearly 30 percent in cyberpunk 2077's launch week um that is i mean that's a lot of money to lose as far yeah, as stocks right. go it's, it's a lot of value um to just mm -hmm. completely you know disappear in less than a, in less than a week um mm -hmm. Uh, here we go. Uh, what does it say right here? Uh, stock in CD Projekt Red has seen a dramatic decline in the weeks surrounding the successful launch of its highly anticipated Cyberpunk 2077. A successful launch? I don't think it was successful. Okay, whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> since December 4th, shares in CD Projekt Red have plunged nearly 30% and almost 11 points since its release yesterday, as of this writing. Um, a, a, a bunch of things prompted this this you know depreciation in stock um first of all i think what the, the the fundamental the fundamental issue was of course that this is an unfinished game in essence they definitely need to delay they needed to delay it at least for like i think a minimum of six months but even six months i think is yeah. it's not enough um yeah. it was just i mean i don't know what's been your experience playing it so far 
Honestly, my experience hasn't been too bad. Yes, I've noticed uh, I since I did buy Cyberpunk for the Xbox One originally, mm-hmm. um, I did notice, and I, I think you were watching me while I was streaming, uh, some glitches and some bugs, but uh, it was only for like a split second or a second. My experience uh, hasn't been too bad. Mm-hmm. Um, but then once I've changed to the Series S and when I played it last night, uh, I didn't notice any bugs. I, I don't think... So I think if it, it would have, um, I, I believe it would have had a better success if it was only exclusively for the Series S, mm-hmm. the X, play, PS5, and PC. I don't think if they had uh, chosen to sell on the Xbox One and the PS4, they wouldn't have uh, taken such a big hit and uh, with all those refunds and everything but i've enjoyed it overall story wise gameplay wise uh all the options of the adventures that you can take yeah um i've enjoyed it as a as a story story wise as a whole um i think it's it's a pretty unique game from my experience so far um i have experienced motion sickness though while playing it oh wow uh, just a little bit so luckily i've i was able to turn off some of the features that didn't um that helped me with the motion sickness and it didn't help me experience it as much so it's i think it's a pretty solid game overall like i understand the complaints with the xbox one and the ps4 um but for refunds for me i think it's a bit excessive and i think it's kind of an insult to the game designers that took a lot of work into it i believe they've been creating what like this game for how many years eight years right it, it, yeah it was announced eight years but i think development only started um in 2016 right that's, yeah. that's insane yeah I, I, I just i just feel bad for the game designers that worked really hard on this game yeah but um i understand the frustration with, especially with how buggy the game is and everything that's happened so far yeah um yeah i mean the the main issue uh, as i said it's the game but it's not necessarily the fault isn't from the developers the fault has been management and leadership Mm -hmm. um they obviously like this game was supposed to come out on april uh, in april so that was way before uh, ps5 and the xbox series x were um ever announced or they were ever giving a date when they were going to be released so Mm -hmm. I, I honestly feel like some something must have been going on in the background. They must have, you know, just seen just how how much how many pre-orders there were for the PS4 and the Xbox One. I mean, it was like over 40% of their uh, pre-orders were all on those consoles. Um, and I feel like, I mean, I this is all speculation, but I I don't think they, I think they just they over over promised and under delivered um this is obviously very old hardware the xbox one and the ps4 um and they should have like you said they should have cut off those last gen consoles or at least made this game at the beginning on december 10th they should have made it pc exclusive because i've been playing it on pc and Mm -hmm. even though my my pc is a mid-range pc it's a it has a rx 580 card which is i mean it's it's one of the low end like even from the mid range is one of the low end cards um but it's it's I mean it works fine i have you know dips here and there um the glitches are mostly like visual glitches it's nothing game breaking um right. there isn't anything necessarily flawed with the game um mm. it's just little it's polish it, it just it lacks polish um it's still a very pretty game the the story the the writing is fantastic yes. i feel it's, it's one of the best video game stories I've, I've played in a while um i still haven't beaten it but so far i'm liking what's happening um but yeah like this game i feel it was just miscommunication like from management they they obviously have to appease to their shareholders because it is a public a publicly traded company and i mean that's just i mean that's just setting you up for failure because like if something is not ready you should not put it out like even i think like like you said if they would have just cut off last gen completely they would have gotten flack and they would have gotten hate but it would have been way way um well it'd be just way less hate than 
than what's currently happening because my Definitely. god like people refunding their games and then also the way cd project red handled the the release um was a mess because i mean the free refunding it was a mess because even then even during that process they weren't uh honest or transparent with mm -hmm. neither sony nor microsoft um and i think there was a whole mis miscommunication issue there so now you even got the companies that publish your games sony and microsoft like mm -hmm. putting up warnings saying like this game is buggy are you sure you want to purchase it they yeah. had the uh, ps4 completely took it off their digital storefront like I, I don't know what management is doing man like right. honestly I, I feel so bad for the devs because they they honestly put a lot of a lot of work into this game and and you can tell like it's a it's 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 a work of love because it's it's a really good game it's really well done mm -hmm. it's really well designed and like it's just it's very sad man <laughs> um but i did a whole video on it and like i gave my thoughts and you know i put out some more detailed information on like where they're at currently um i honestly don't know what's gonna happen like there's already cl a clash a clash a, cl a class action lawsuit um in the works against cd project red from the shareholders so like it's 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 cd project red against the world at this point and and like i i honestly hope that they survive this because i mean they have great developers they i mean the witcher 3 is a great game they 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 have a they have a a reputation like they're not bad developers they're just they just have bad leadership so agreed we'll see man we'll see but i'm gonna keep playing i'm gonna keep playing cyberpunk i'm really really yeah. into the story right now i'm into it how far into the story you are um i'm trying to think i so my guy's at level six now barely um i'm about to do my first heist oh, okay yeah and you, you chose corpo right i i chose uh corpo corpo yeah i don't know anything about that storyline <laughs> so i'm, I'm oh yeah you're street kid you? i'm doing street kid and i think like okay. that's one of the the more popular choices because that's all yeah. i've seen on on like reviews and stuff footage from that okay. storyline so yeah that that's another thing i really like about this game is it there's already a new plus game you know so if you ever finish it you can just start again and do a, a completely different storyline mm -hmm. so i'm liking it man i hope i hope they i hope they they you know they survive this <laughs> yeah. i would hate to see a, a great studio go bankrupt or something right and then not develop another game in the future exactly yeah, um then it's probably going to be another eight or 10 years or so until they make another game man after this uh, yeah uh, yeah that, yeah it's also like a logistics issue like if they knew i think it was just also overly ambitious they tried to they tried to conquer the world when you know they were probably riding high on the witcher 3 success that they said yeah we can definitely pull this off and like in right. less than four years like i i don't think that's capable like games i i think that the what made this game overly ambitious more than anything is the world the world building um yes. because like this is and this is just a very um primitive review so far because i i, I haven't really gotten th through the whole game mm -hmm. um i i honestly feel like the environment is so well done like you're walking down the street and you you look up and there's like huge buildings all around you and there's there's flying cars like there's so much happening around you it's yeah. it, it can get very overwhelming mm -hmm. but for uh, for this type of density in an environment like i think even the environment doesn't it needs way more than four years to develop just because of how interconnected everything is um like i don't know they, they could have really really um used some more time just, um outside of the buildings too like but also inside of each each and every building that you can go into yeah like the bars the, the clubs mm -hmm. um stores all all of those things yeah yeah and there's there, yeah there's so much personality inside each building like 
I don't know, like even, and this goes also to the story behind, you know, just the, the, the writers, like each character you meet, like even if it's just the store associate, like they have a story behind them and that, you know, they'll talk your ear out, your ear off about their life and stuff. Um, and yeah, I think that's it, just how dense this game is, is what definitely made this game overly ambitious because like I, I keep going back and trying to compare it to like other open world games like red dead redemption ghost of tsushima like those games are great but it's not the, the the area isn't as densely populated as cyberpunk there's a lot more things hitting you from left right up down in the environments that you're in that you know it just can't compare um mm -hmm. and like even those games the legend of zelda breath of the wild is it took more than five years to develop and like it, it was an open world game like if if a game like that that is completely barren takes five years to develop i can't imagine something so densely packed like this not right. take more than five years like they just they just mismanaged the whole process for sure so yeah you're still hoping that cd project red is around to give us a cyberpunk 3077 or something <laughs> yeah you know i hope so <laughs> um and then now for what is the second news item of the week and something that really made me happy because now i have a next gen console um walmart actually put in place some bot protection um that and i, I didn't expect it from walmart like I feel Walmart would be the last retailer to actually care about bots. Like online, everywhere you go online in these like stock Twitter accounts, they'll tell like every single comment down below will be like, oh, Walmart is dropping um, like at 2.30 p.m. And I was like, oh, Bot Mart is dropping at 2.30 p.m. Like everybody just completely uh, makes fun of, of Walmart and their reputation with bots that, you know, when I saw that they actually put uh, bot protection i was like wow this is why i was able to get a, a ps5 honestly right. like this is the only reason why i was able to get one um and i'm reading the article and it says uh 20 million bot attempts mm -hmm. but not bots so now i'm like curious like how many bots were there total you know well that's the thing like i think a single bot can can do um easily thousands and thousands of requests um in a second mm -hmm. um and like i don't know it, it i mean i'm glad that at least somebody is you know putting some protections because right playstation I'm amazed playstation didn't say anything microsoft didn't put something in in line because the people who like lose the most money on this are the console makers um it doesn't matter if they sell all their supply all their stocks i mean they're already selling the hardware at a base almost at a cost like their their profit margins are so low on consoles uh, because it takes like i think like a ps5 takes it costs like 450 dollars to produce so they're only marking it up by 50 dollars um so they're them selling all those consoles to people who are not going to play those consoles they're losing money on like the digital store people not buying games people not right. playing games and like if, if a if a if a parent don't like pays a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars for a console they're probably only going to buy one game when instead they could have bought two or three games with that money um yeah. so and i'm my membership too yeah exactly all the bundles and the thing other things that the games come with yeah so i mean i'm surprised that microsoft and sony weren't the first ones to put something in place they had cues and stuff but like nothing as far as bot protection right um microsoft didn't even have cues um really I think so. yeah no there's no queue it's just it's the same process when it goes when you try to purchase from best buy or gamestop like it's in your cart like oh, oh just because it's in your cart doesn't mean it will like you can't buy it and it says like error try again error try again yeah they'll they don't they don't even tell you like oh we're we're like constantly restocking do they do it in waves or is it just like a single just a single drop i think it's waves waves yeah yeah it's and it was i just find that very very surprising um 
here text spot says uh jerry geisler geisler i don't know how to say it uh <laughs> walmart global text chief information security officer writes that one of the pre preventative actions that the company implemented just hours before the playstation 5 event on november 25th blocked more than 20 million bot attempts within the first 30 minutes alone um he also notes that any making it through then faced audits with all order conf or orders confirmed to have been bought by bots canceled by the firm as a result the vast majority of our next gen consoles have been purchased by legitimate customers which is exactly what we want and like i'm 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 happy man um I'm, I'm i'm happy Especially that you were, you were able to get your console via yeah. walmart <laughs> yeah and obviously there was yeah I, i'm too, i'm not too happy that i gave walmart any money but <laughs> like at the same time i'm playing spider-man miles morales right now <laughs> i was gonna say what can you do you know yeah exactly mm -hmm. um but obviously i there was also some people that i saw um at least on the stock pages uh stock accounts that i follow replying to whenever walmart will drop they say like get, they just canceled my console my ca console order um and people say were you running a bot and they're like no i just they canceled my first one because i kept hitting add to cart and then when i order it they cancel it because of unusual activity and then when i try to order it again they canceled my second order because they thought yeah. i was a bot so there were still like there's still like some issues with the system yeah um i i honestly i commend because i just can't get i i, I can't wrap my head around the amount of work that it is to set up bot protection and mm -hmm. to determine what's a bot who's a bot who's an illegitimate customer like even if you put um captchas like bots are are getting increasingly complex and and like way smarter um i i'm not telling you i did it but like i researched <laughs> how to set up a bot and like i somebody sent I found allegedly, allegedly, I found a way on like uh, a, an explanation on how to set up bot, and it's like it, it's a whole it's a whole program programming class at this point. Like I'm I'm amazed with with how how crafty scammers can get. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, but hey, hmm. I, at least I hope now kids are gonna be able to play next gen consoles actual gamers are going to be able to purchase these consoles um and i really hope uh sony microsoft give us i wish they would like reward us like depending on like how long you've been <laughs> trying to get a console they yeah, give you like cool. start credit or something that'd be a cool feature like get get a purchase by this date and you will you'll receive uh, something in addition to this game like okay. a spider-man costume or yeah <laughs> and you gotta like submit you gotta submit like um um a detailed report of, of your mental health like you see yeah. oh like oh you know <laughs> he actually like when he lost it by by the month mark yeah here's Send fifty dollars <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah no but i'm happy finally um, I actually wasn't expecting the console to get here until January 9th. Um, yeah, same here, actually. My console was supposed to arrive on January 5th, and then suddenly um, I get a UPS tracking order, and it says it's coming on December 19th. And I was just like, wait, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> so then that happened. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I thought all of these were going to be back orders. Um because i mean that would be the smart thing to do you know even if you don't have the stock but you know you're gonna get more stock just let yeah. people order it and then mm -hmm. ship it whenever but hey it's a christmas miracle right. we got our we got our next gen consoles and uh um and yeah it had to happen at some point i know whether it was like january or this month exactly yeah we got lucky <laughs> yeah and uh i hope everybody out there anybody who's listening to this i hope you get lucky soon as well um, don't buy from scammers period don't buy from from yeah scammers that's that's what they are i i, I, don't, I don't scalping is a little bit i think just puts them in a pedestal right they're scamming like they're not adding anything to value yeah. to yeah like it's just it's, call it how it is <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, be patient. Um, our third news item of the week. This one, like, legitimately gave me some goosebumps. Like, this one is a very scary story. And now I don't know how to feel about Nintendo as a company. Um, like, and like art, feel free to not say anything. If you fear for your life, <laughs> if you fear, <laughs> if Nintendo comes after, after us, just come for me. Cause I'm the one who put this, this news item in here. This is my first time hearing this. So I'm, I, I'm going to listen and I, I, I will give my thoughts. <laughs> oh, it was, you're in for a ride, man. Um, there's, I mean, there, there, there were some documents, uh, not necessarily leaked because I think these are old documents, but they kind of just came back into, uh, into the spotlight. Um, there's, there was a whole document. Um, it looks like it was a PDF, um, from like internal, uh, from an internal memo of like corporate memo from Nintendo, um, titled hacker enforcement proposal. Um, this, you know, I'm just going to read it how it says hacker enforcement proposal is recommended before any public release of their exploits. Nemod, Nemoid, Nemod, whatever this hacker's name is, or uh, pirate, I don't know what to call them, um, is the priority target for the following reasons. So they, they basically wrote out a whole profile on this person. Um, someone who, you know, here are the following reasons why he was targeted. He has been involved in DS and DSi hacking. He enjoys a very high reputation within the hacker scene for Nintendo products, and he is a highly skilled hardware engineer. Uh, Nemod, our hacker, uh, key investigative findings. Um, he's they when I say profile, like they even went as far as researching their employer. Um, their, their, his awards during university, his project, his thesis project. Um, they obviously knew, you know, what university he went to. Um, it says right here, current employment. I, I, I mean, I think I'm just gonna not, you know, not put stuff out, even though it's out there in Twitter. Like you can look it up yourself, but I'm just not gonna put this guy in, anymore on the on the spotlight. It doesn't feel right uh, but like they even had um his his age um they knew where he lived they had a schedule of what his typical week looked like um they even surveilled his home because it says here surveillance didn't reveal any friends or visitors entering or leaving the residence with Nimon. only additional activity included a trip to the bank and a restaurant alone this is Nintendo, by the way. This is Nintendo doing this this investigation. Like, this is this is basically what the CIA would do, or yeah, the CIA would do for like a terrorist or something. Like, it's it's crazy. It's 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 amazing to me just the lengths they go to just because someone pirated their their hardware. Like, right. Oh my god, man. Um, and then they even had a a, a whole section titled "Next Steps." Uh, propose <laughs> the next targets. Um, this this definitely seems like a meeting memo like this these seems like these, these look like topics they talk through in a meeting um mm -hmm. suggestions and then they go through a list of hackers um yellow sate markan geohot are like i'm guessing the names of the hackers um they instruct people whoever is part of this seal team seal team six um develop profiles for each target confirm real identity and physical location determine hacker status the hacker levels are white gray and black like like if they were hurricanes um and like this to me is it just it, it's amazing to me that there's a whole department dedicated inside nintendo to research hackers to go after them and like even uh, contact them directly like it's 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 amazing to me like it, it really pains a very weird it first of all it's funny because it's it's like it's tragic it's tragically funny and comedic the lengths yeah. that nintendo goes to protect their stuff yeah. um and also it's very scary because i don't i don't I, I don't like a business or a corporation as big as nintendo going after individuals like it just feels dark 
it feels it dystopian. It doesn't feel like Nintendo. Something that Nintendo would do. <laughs> exactly. It, it feels dystopian. It feels like a, a government would do this, like a dictatorship. Yeah. Like it's 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 amazing to me to see this. Um, right. There's so even in other words, don't mess with Nintendo. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't mess with if if uh, Nintendo Ninja is watching this, we're just. I mean, we're just. I have my switch right here and then it's like i put like a screwdriver and they start tracking me or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah i never modded my switch it, it it i bought it purple that's how it came i swear to god um but like they even have next stage steps um they have this whole section called next stage of hearts and minds initiative that's really dark that they named it hearts and minds um mm. The, the next stage consists of out, uh, outreach to development community, Waku Waku, which I'm guessing that's what the development well. community is called. Um, leverage Nemod K and T to influence hacker community, which this kind of like it. I mean, it makes me believe that they wanted to reach out to Nemod and try and convince them to, like, I don't know, influence hack other hackers to like stop hacking the nintendo products um formalize hacker bounty in bounty. quotes and promote positive image of nintendo regarding security and software development that is uh man that is a, that is a handful like that's a lot of process yep um it's <laughs> i don't know what to think about it honestly <laughs> like it, it is it, do the means justify i mean do does what is it does the end justify the means like is it ethical for a company as as nintendo to go like even you know search through people's personal lives and um basically stalk them like they're nintendo is stalking Maybe justify the ends sorry i had to think about it <laughs> yeah yeah exactly but like it i understand trying to protect your ip trying to protect like your product because obviously like uh, i i'm not i'm not excusing them but like piracy isn't is is usually the the piracy exists because there's not the option for some people to like either play those games like people pirate games from nintendo 64 nes because there's usually no way there's no hardware or any functioning hardware being developed to play those games um right like I, I don't remember who it was. It was somebody in the gaming industry. Um, I think it was... Uh, I don't know if it was the, the guy from Valve. Um, who basically... I, I'm probably misquoting. But mm -hmm. they said that... Um, you know... The best way to fight piracy is not to go after people. And like issuing cease and desist. The best way is to provide a service. That's just as good as what they're getting through their pirated means. Um because that's all it is like piracy in in essence piracy that's not for profit and in, in essence is because people want access to that content they want access to um uh, the games or whatever it, it might be so i don't know man i don't know what's going on i don't know what's going on with nintendo like they they had a, a about how dark nintendo is every every week yeah things happening <laughs> it's 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 amazing like um oh i just found some more stuff through my investigative journalism right now oh boy um oh it's just it's it's their sources okay uh, yeah it's just it was a, a a file but i don't feel like downloading it because you never know um <laughs> uh, but apparently uh, they found a this all comes from a presentation it was a powerpoint presentation um it was a debrief on next steps regarding the hacker community interesting it's it's crazy it's amazing yeah. um but uh, I, I don't i don't have anything to say i already spoke my mind like <laughs> it's just creepy to me like playing cyberpunk really made me wary of corporations more than i was already <laughs> yeah i'm Especially like about playing the corporal route ex i'm you I know are. you're playing Street Kid. Yeah, I'm Sorry. playing Street Kid. I, yeah. <laughs> I thought you were too. Sorry, I have another friend that's playing the Corporal Run. Uh, so that's, I mentioned that. Yeah, the Corporal Run. I mean, no, never mind. Don't ruin it for me. 
I'm, I'm <laughs> definitely gonna play that route later. Um, but yeah, um, I, I I don't know what's necessarily the current status with that hacker in specific specific specifically. I can't speak specifically, um, but I mean, watch out if if you are out there modding stuff. If you're out there hacking uh, Nintendo software, <laughs> Nintendo hardware, just be careful. Just um, don't. Just don't. I mean, I, I mean, I can't tell you what to do, but now you know what they're capable of. They're not afraid. There are they are Nintendo ninjas, so they'll send a Nintendo police, which is just or Nintendo SWAT team. It's a oh. bunch of Mario's dressed up. Oh my God! Imagine. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's that's what just comes to mind. I would be. I would actually be happy. Like, oh yes, Nintendo <laughs> World on on my foot on my doorstep. Um, come take me <laughs> exactly they just come riding in like yoshis yeah shooting stars um well yeah i mean that's it <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what else to comment on that um uh on our fourth news item of the week um i actually want to i'm gonna add one after this one um uh, because i do want to talk about the uh, super nintendo world if that's something oh. that you uh, did you watch the the let's let's go into that already screw it okay. let's go yeah, into the nintendo the super nintendo world direct we got a direct people said that we weren't getting direct anymore but we got a direct um it's basically miyamoto the creator of mario walking us through uh universal studios japan's recently open uh area i thought it was gonna be like its own world but it's apparently it's just an area yeah. um it's super nintendo world um what did you think of it man um i'm excited for it i can't wait to see yeah i thought it was going to be a lot on a larger scale but i'm excited to see what uh what rides or what you know what features they have there it's like i guess galaxy's edge but in a, a nintendo world which is pretty amazing to see something like that happen for the first time and i hope it comes to the states eventually yeah um they did announce that it was coming to um, I think there was one in Hollywood and another yes. one in Orlando. Mm -hmm. um, and then the third one was in Asia. It was Singapore, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Um, but yeah, we got a lot from um, it, it's it's kind of it's kind of ironic now that we're talking about Nintendo in such a good light. <laughs> yeah, all of that. And we're just trying to get on their good terms. Yeah, on their good side. We're trying not to get them to come after us. <laughs> exactly. Um, I'm, I'm very excited about this. I don't know if I'll be able to visit. I, I mean, I don't think as Americans we'll be able to visit in like one year. I probably it's going to be like probably a max of two years until people yeah. can start visiting this place from outside of Japan. Um, right. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm very excited. Like you said, I thought it was going to be in a, on a grander scale. I thought mm -hmm. it was going to have like at least four or five rides um apparently there's only one ride oh, that's close. yeah um it has like it's like a like a mario kart-esque um roller coaster um mm -hmm. that apparently they they put vr glasses on you and you're basically kind of like playing the game um i don't know the whole details about it but it looks really cool i told my i was watching it with my girlfriend and i told her like I remember when they at first announced the Super Nintendo World that they were developed, like creating this whole area for Universal Studios. Um, I told her like I teared up. I literally teared up when I first saw like the people walking into the place and just seeing like every single thing from my childhood playing these games for so long and like people just having fun and like doing these crazy stuffs with their wristwatch and everything. I was like, wow like it's yeah. a dream come true and and like it really made me feel like a kid again like looking at the uh, my favorite part was a cafe um i'll have to watch that toad's cafe <laughs> yeah, toad's it, cafe that's amazing yeah canopia's cafe looks amazing um i'm excited i'm excited i usually hate um i don't usually go to theme parks that much but um when i've been to six flags when i've been to uh disneyland um I used to hate the food. Th the food there, I don't know. It just looks comic, 
like comically bad to me mm -hmm. but like the food that they showed in this nintendo drag was i don't know man they showed like a burger a mushroom burger um they showed a bunch of different mushroom dishes mm -hmm. and everything looks tasty man and i hate that i'm about to pay like 50 dollars for a burger because i know that's <laughs> how much it's gonna cost um but yeah the, um the park also is kind of like a, an interactive park um they give you these wristbands or wrist watches um that let you interact with a bunch of different things from the from the uh uh from the uh, theme park around um you collect coins it's basically the whole theme park is basically a video game which i mm -hmm. think that's a really cool way to you know design a whole theme park around um it connects to an app that's how you collect all your stamps or whatever your coins i don't, I don't exactly understand how it works mm -hmm. but yeah man i'm i'm very excited for this I, I i'm more excited to be honest for the the u.s uh theme parks that they like the versions that they build out here because i know out here they're gonna wild out oh yeah for sure i know it's gonna be bigger and better yeah so agreed yeah i wonder if they'll be completely different from the one in japan or if they'll be most likely the same yeah uh i mean Just i don't know are you a big fan of theme parks i so i did used to have a disneyland uh annual pass and i did have a universal studios pass at one point even though i only just went like once or twice mm -hmm. um no yeah I'm, I'm a fan of theme parks especially with how close they are to, uh from my location so um uh, of course like i don't plan on going to a theme park anytime soon um i know orlando disneyland's still open but I, yeah. I don't understand why anybody would risk that but you know everybody has their own everybody has their own opinion mm -hmm. um hopefully we get to see theme parks again in the future um within the next i'm gonna give it two years but who knows we'll see yeah um yeah i mean yeah even if you're not a kid i feel this is i feel this place is gonna be filled with adults i don't think there's gonna be a lot of kids here <laughs> it's just gonna be people our age just i can agree can you imagine if they hosted smash tournaments there oh <laughs> which i don't think nintendo would approve but <laughs> no not at all um but yeah it's uh, i mean i'm excited I'm, I'm excited to see what once it opens like i really want to see i want to see vlogs of people um you know that go there and you know give us like the on like the non-marketing tour of the of the yeah. place um because like i mean currently it looks bigger than it actually is i feel it's gonna be a lot smaller um so i'm keeping my hopes kind of realistically realistic um but yeah that's exciting um okay our final news item of the week now we got more nintendo leaks 2020 has been the year of nintendo leaks um this new nintendo leak reveals that ori the original plans for the switch they it was actually the switch was actually meant to be compatible uh with the 3ds um it was going to be able to be, be a play 3ds games um here in nintendo everything oh a lot of this is in japanese um there have been lots of leaks from nintendo's archives throughout 2020 they provided blah 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 blah, blah, blah. Um, the switch leak covers documents from 2014 well before the system was finalized Twitter users Orchestra, that's a cool play on, on words, um, and Forest Illusions shared some of the interesting findings. We're able to see an early design and learn about cut features like 3DS backwards compatibility. Um, here's the full roundup of features that apparently, um, well, of, of the full the full roundup of information or details from this leak. Um, the Switch name was decided way back in 2014. Uh, Nintendo's original Switch concept used an SOC from AT Ericsson. I'm guessing that's some hardware. That's something like inside. That's some hardware piece. Yeah. Um, this console was to support 3D video and be backwards compatible with 3DS, seemingly Street Pass, Spot Pass, and Pedometer. Pedometer. 
pedometer. <laughs> pedometer. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Go. <laughs> I'm gonna cut it right there. I'm gonna cut I was that. Gonna say, censored. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> pedometer. <laughs> Feature is planned like the 3DS. It was not decided. I, I don't know how a pedometer would work. I don't think people walk around with their uh, switches <laughs> that much. Um, it was not decided, but the final device would sport one or two screens, likely one. Okay. <laughs> the, the screen would cap out at 480p. Oh, that would have been terrible. Yeah, that would have been terrible. Oh, I, I, I'm glad they chose the single 720p screen. Yeah. I mean, the concept, if you look at the concept art, it looks pretty neat, but I don't know how I'd feel with the joysticks on the screen, you know? Yeah. It, yeah, it looks like a, a Super Nintendo controller. Yeah, I love the shape of it. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how I feel about the whole thing being a screen. And I'm sure that's how, like, original iPhones had started out. Yeah. Like, the concepts. Yeah. I, and I think I've seen this, this concept before. I think mm -hmm. I've seen the concept before. I didn't know that it was going to be 3DS uh, compatible. Mm -hmm. But when I first saw this concept, I honestly thought it was like a fan-made thing. And I was like, mm -hmm. no way. Why would you put the, the joysticks on the screen? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, the device would be able to broadcast video th through Miracast. Um, so I'm guessing like that was before the dock was a thing. Um, that can mean this concept would be for a portable console that does not dock into a TV. There you go. Instead of displaying video to a TV wirelessly, um, while still having the unit usable, similar to the Wii U gamepad. Um, interesting. Switch powered by AT would support video capture with the ability to add video audio commentary. You could then upload to it, it to Nintendo World. That would have been useful. That would have been very useful, yeah. But I don't know about Nintendo World having access to my videos, you know? Exactly. <laughs> All the stuff we're finding out about them. Yeah. And also, even so, even now, you uploading to like YouTube and, and Twitch, there's already so many gu guidelines. I can't imagine uploading to Nintendo World. Right. You probably say, like, I don't know, even start a word with the letter F and they censor you forever. That reminds me of how uncensored the Smash stages were when you can upload the Smash stages to like a library on the Nintendo app. I remember like when I first typed in P and then I saw all the <laughs> Smash stages that were created and my eyes just were bleeding and I was like, I understand why they censor this now. Like it makes sense. That was Smash 4? Uh, no, that was Smash Ultimate. This was oh, when they first, oh they censored yeah. the stages. Um, all the stages were uncensored. Um, oh, I, I mean, I remember yeah. when people were doing like crazy things with the with the stages, but I didn't know they censored it. Right. I I imagine they censored it now because <laughs> because when it when it first came out, like being able to download stages from all over all over the world, then there there were just so many. So many bad things I saw, including some 9-11 stuff. I was just like, oh, Jesus. God. Like, why? I don't I don't know what goes into the minds of these people when they're creating these stages. Man, that's why we can't have nice things. Nope. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I mean, it, it would have been it would have been interesting to, to uh, be able to play 3DS games. I, I, I think like the hardware i think it's it's more than capable of playing 3ds games um it's already a portable system like i think it would have worked perfectly um mm -hmm. because i mean i have a 3ds now that i think of it i haven't played it in like three months and there's yeah. so many games that i bought for it that i never finished because the switch came around yeah and i'm just like oh. if they would have if, if the switch would have been backwards compatible with 3ds oof right that would have been amazing the last time i think and i'm pretty sure everyone else has been using their th uh their 2ds or 3ds was to transfer pokemon to pokemon home which mm. is the app yeah. on the switch where you can transfer all of the pokemon that you ever you've ever had onto uh sword and shield also mm. yeah yeah but that's the last time i used my 3ds and that was for that reason i even had to use uh my original ds for one of the old pokemon games to transfer to pokemon bank and then all those pokemon from pokemon bank to home 
to sword and shield oh my god it was a long process but it was just like digging up something you know that was, that felt ancient but it was totally worth it because i had so many sh uh shiny pokemon on there and then to have them in on my switch is it's, it was a blessing <laughs> pokemon fans are dedicated oh yeah having to go through so many through some through so many apps just to get your pokemon mm -hmm. i hey I, I admire you guys <laughs> um but yeah um i would have i would have loved to be able to play majora's mask for the 3ds on my switch that's all i want i just want more zelda games on my switch <laughs> um but besides that i don't think i think we covered everything man um is there anything else you want to touch upon um uh, not that i can think of i feel like i feel like more st once we get more into our next gens we'll have more to talk about like next time yeah sure after holidays, and that'll be fun definitely i mean i'm already experiencing some issues with it so <laughs> yeah i noticed that on the stream oh, i mean I, and i don't know what the actual issue because i just get choppy frames whenever i'm streaming on my on the stream last but on the actual yeah. like game capture it looks amazing it looks great yeah so it's probably just me um, i'm actually glad that i haven't been i haven't tried streaming my series s on here but but one thing that makes me glad about being able to stream with that series s is because it's so small yeah. that i can fit it on my desk but the series x i don't even know if i'd be able to fit that on my desk and be able to stream it yeah this one so yeah I, yeah I, honestly I, i've been i've been looking at that series s like I, I want to prepare because I know Halo Infinite is going to be really good. And that's going to be an amazing yep. game. And also looking at it as a Game Pass machine. Uh, oh, yeah. There's so many good games on Game Pass. And like all the games that are currently on Game Pass, they'll run perfectly fine. And they'll look amazing yep. uh, on, a fifth, on a 1440p um, uh, system. Mm. I don't think anybody needs 4K. I, honestly, I think it's just a gimmick. It looks amazing. No. I did. I did play 4K. I have a 4K TV. And it looks yeah, great, but I'm like, you know. And then for streaming, we all play on. I don't think there are that many 4K monitors, but I'm pretty sure, not at this time, I would be able to afford, afford a 4K monitor. I just use a normal 24 yeah. inch or, you know, or smaller. Yeah, just, and I don't think you can even stream 4K. Like I, I think Twitch has a cap on um resolution and i think youtube yeah. does as well and i don't think either of them can do 4k so mm. it's i mean it's more of a personal um choice and you know if you have a, if you have a great three theater go ahead 4k is gonna mm -hmm. look amazing yeah. um but yeah um i i love my ps5 i i'm so far i'm enjoying it i'm only played like three hours because i've been doing other stuff but yeah. i love it so far Great. um the the transfer the transferring all my games to it from the ps4 was pretty seamless um i did get to play ghost of tsushima on ps5 uh it looks amazing it's it now it runs in 60 frames per second it's smooth it looks amazing in 4k it's i, I i'm still upset that it didn't win game of the year but <laughs> yeah it's amazing um and i guess i mean to end it off here i can i'll just go ahead and ask you what are you going to be playing this week i know it's christmas time but yeah. are you going to be able to play anything at all or so um i'm actually i dug up my gamecube oh yeah oh your stream yeah go ahead and tell so, people yeah i'm going to be streaming the original animal crossing tomorrow when i get my power supply because that's the one thing i'm missing for my gamecube mm. uh, i'll be playing the original animal crossing and then christmas eve i'll be playing animal crossing again just because of the event uh toy oh, day yeah. which is christmas eve so i'll be doing that and then after i want to say christmas is on i'm going to be doing cyberpunk and uh destiny 2 on the series s oh, nice destiny 2 is free right um i believe so on game pass okay uh i know some of the, the expansions are free yeah because I, last mm -hmm. time i heard i heard that destiny 2 was free on the ps4 i don't know if it's the same for the ps5 okay. and that's a game i really want to check out i've never yeah. got the chance to play it but 
It's fun. It's smooth. And what I like about it, it's one of the FPSs that doesn't get me motion sickness. I feel like Call of Duty, um, Cyberpunk does slightly, but it's just because of, you know, all the movements they try to make it realistic. But yeah. Because Destiny 2 and Halo, they're by the same company, but not anymore for Halo, but still, like, they adapt, like, the same features uh there's something about it about the motion and i believe what i heard it's a field of view that uh, mm. makes you motion sickness so i don't get that feeling from destiny 2 or halo at all but from other fps's i do oh okay yeah nice well um as far as me i'm gonna be playing this week my ps5 i'm just gonna be going through the menus that's it not playing games <laughs> no i'm gonna be playing um uh, uh, spider-man miles morales um it looks amazing um i i honestly so far it hasn't blown me away it still looks like a I, i'm not gonna say it looks the same as the, the previous spider-man game but it still hasn't like shocked me as like oh this is a next gen game so right. i think i have to play on my actual tv to like really get that experience so i might check that out right now um, or later tonight um, and then I'm gonna be playing I'm actually playing a lot of smash so I might, I might I might go and play some more with Sephiroth I love Sephiroth um, I don't think we touched upon Sephiroth but like there's three or four channels already three or four videos on my channel of Sephiroth which people might already get upset they're already the tired thing, the one thing I've been that I've been hating about not Sephiroth I I, I think Sephiroth is fun but when I do matchmaking <laughs> when I do quick play every single player i play against is sephiroth 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 i'm like i haven't played any other character against any other character besides sephiroth and i'm just like i'm tired of this man i can't yeah i mean he, yeah. he was he's been one of the coolest as far as like villain goes oh yeah um so yeah and uh, he's extremely overpowered i think <laughs> His, he he needs to get me i'm not i'm not gonna say he needs to get nerfed because i don't want to say that but he's honestly he's too op i uh, feel like every dlc needs to get nerfed <laughs> That's just my yeah, opinion. yeah especially min min i know min min is so annoying to fight against um but also besides smash and spider-man uh i'm gonna keep playing cyberpunk because i want to finish it um I've commented that I want to do a review, but I'm not going to do the review until the game is fully finished. Not, not, I'm not saying until I finish it, until the developers finish that game. Um, once it gets passed and everything, then I'll do a review, but I'm going to try and finish it so far. I think I'm almost done with it, um, which I find refreshing. I'm so glad that the story isn't that long. Um, the side missions are where it's at, though. Um, I've yet to do any side missions. I'm actually just doing story. From what I've heard from people is to finish Act One, then start doing side missions after that. So yeah, no, de definitely recommend doing the side missions. Like they're, I mean, I, in my opinion, I think they're way better written as far as like the like like the fundamental stories around them and the characters. They're so good. They're so well done. I, I really like the side missions. Mm -hmm um and they're just i don't know i just i just like them a lot um yeah i like i like that game it's a shame though but yeah <laughs> um anything else art no i believe i believe i'm good okay awesome well folks i've been true fernie this has been the rocket with me the special guest every single week um so i forget always how to do these outros so let me remind <laughs> myself um uh, links to our socials are down below please make sure to follow art he's going to be streaming today because i know i'm not going to be able to edit this podcast tonight probably tomorrow so when it goes up tomorrow he'll probably be streaming animal crossing uh for the gamecube right now so make sure to follow me on follow him on twitch um links to my twitch down below as well I'm, i've come back from a short hiatus i just had needed a break um but now i got a ps5 i'm gonna be streaming a lot more um please make sure to listen to this podcast on spotify we're officially on spotify just search for search and report um or alternatively the video version of this podcast always goes up on my youtube channel true fernie and that's it with that Art, 
You want to say Thank you. parting words? Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Thanks for Thanks joining for us. us. We'll um, be back after the holiday break. I yes. Right. <laughs> yeah. We'll be back after the holiday break. Um, everybody have happy holidays. Have a safe, uh, happy new year. Please stay safe. Uh, wear a mask. Uh, six feet. You know the drill. And sure. wash your hands. <laughs> and uh, yeah, please take care of each other. But most importantly, take care of yourself. Peace.